Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarlane DC Multiverse Atom Smasher from the upcoming Black Atom film. This is both the standard version and the large, supersized mega figure version. This is Atom Smasher in his typical 7 inch regular form, and when he's all grown up, supersized. I got these figures from Figurine for All. They had them a little bit early, although they're also available at the McFarland Toy Store at this point. So let's go ahead and check out the packaging. As you can see at the top, 22 moon parts, McFarland Toys, ages 12, DC Multiverse, Black Adam, Adam Smasher. Here he is in the package. Looks like he has two alternate hands, a display stand, and a collector's card. On the back, here's Adam Smasher, Black Adam. One side of the package, Adam Smasher from Black Adam. Other side, Adam Smasher. At the bottom, got a bunch of credits, and there is a barcode, in case that helps anybody. Then we have the Mega Figure version. DC Multiverse, Adam Smasher. Adam Smasher, this is the supersized version from the Black Adam film. Other side, simply says Adam Smasher. At the bottom, got a bunch of credits, and there is his barcode, in case that helps anybody. And on the back side, similar image of Adam Smasher. So no further ado, let's open them up. And I got this guy and a big lot of figures. Five of them for the Black Adam movie from figureenforall.com. Once again, these are also available at the McFarland Toy Store right now. I should have the other three Black Adam figures arriving tomorrow. Alright, now they've got these figures out of the package. Here they are with all their accessories laid out. The smaller Adam Smasher, he comes with two alternate hands, totally four interchangeable hands and the large Adam Smasher. He doesn't have any character-specific accessories. They both come with a display stand and a collector's card. But before we take a look at the accessories, let's talk about and check out the actual figures. So Adam Smasher's real name is Albert Rothstein. He's the godson of the Golden Age version of the original Adam. Now, Adam Smasher, his ability is he can get much larger, he can grow, and his strength grows accordingly. I believe he can get up to 60 feet tall. Now the original Adam has some different abilities. He can only shrink, and his strength also sort of grows as he shrinks. Kind of interesting. Similarities, but opposites. So of course, they made two different versions of Adam Smasher for this film, and it makes perfect sense to make him a mega figure. My only complaint, I feel like he should be even bigger than this. I mean, he's pretty big, but he should be as tall as Swamp Thing or Titan Joker. But we'll check all that out later in the video. Right now, let's take a look at the figure. Starting off with the regular version of Adam Smasher, this is how he'll be interacting with the rest of the Justice Society. I like his sort of mask. Kind of has a Deadpool vibe to it. The blue above the eyes, the white. And you can see there's some texturing on the black parts. Overall, the suit looks good. Got the sort of atomic symbol here. Double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. Suit's pretty cool. Definitely has sort of a familiar feel to it, but the movie spin as well. Then we have the bigger M Smasher, and this is definitely the more fun of the two figures, but this is going to be when he's in action, fighting, larger. You see a lot more of the detail, same sort of texture in the black parts, blue around the eyes, the white eyes, no mouth, double jointed elbows, double jointed knees, same sort of brown belt. Figure looks good. Feels really nice. Sturdy. Moves good. I'm liking pretty much everything about it. So far I'm leaning more toward the big one. But you gotta have them able to interact with each other when they're not fighting. And then just a closer look at his face and head sculpt. This is the 7 inch scale Adam Smasher. And here's the larger scale version. Just all the details are enhanced. I do kind of feel like his left leg is a little bit warped from the packaging here. I'm gonna go ahead and heat up some boiling water, dip in there and see if it corrects itself. So I dipped his left leg into some boiling water and it actually straightened itself out quite a bit. He stands a little better now. 
And here are both the figures broken down as far as they can go, with all of their removal parts detached. Now the smaller version of Anno Smasher comes with two open hands and two fists. The larger version only has the two open hands. I think it's more important to me for the larger one to have two fists, but unfortunately it is what it is. I wonder if they were maybe originally planned and then scrapped for cost purposes. I don't know. I just think when he's big, that's when he's fighting. That's when he's smashing. He'll need fists, hence the name Adam Smasher. Now let's take a look at his accessories, and let's start off with the boring stuff. Both these figures come with the McFarlane display stand. Typical display stand, black perfect circle, says DC on the bottom. It's got one peg for the pegles on the feet. Very thin, very basic. Now let's take a look at their collector's cards. They're essentially the exact same card. The one on the left came with a 7 inch figure, and the one on the right with the larger figure. It seems like the one on the left is a little more blue, the one on the right a little more purple. But that could just be the difference paint on the card. Now it's an image of Adam Smasher, not from the film, not the figure, but I don't know, maybe a comic adaptation of the film. Adam Smasher from Black Adam. On the back, there is a description. If you want to read that, go ahead and pause now. And it does look like the description will be the same on both of them. So the only actual character specific accessories they come with are some alternate hands. And only for the smaller version of Adam Smasher, which I think is ludicrous. But I still like these figures. He has two fists and two open hands. Here he is with his first pair of hands. These are his fists. And here he is with his other pair of hands. These would be good for some grabbing or throwing hands. And now the big Adam Smasher has the exact same open hands, but he's lacking fists. I know I'm beating that dead horse with a stick, but it's a big omission, and he definitely should have had some alternate hands. Now they've taken a pretty good look at both the figures and their accessories. Now let's check out their height. So for the first Adam Smasher, from bottom to the top of his head, he's standing at about 7.1 inches tall, which is going to translate to about 18 centimeters. And then... The larger version, he's going to stand about 9.75 inches tall, which can translate to just under 25 centimeters. Now let's check out their articulation, which I expect to be very similar. And we'll start off with the smaller version. Start with his head. You can rotate from side to side. You can look up about that far, down about that far. Not bad. You can't tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders, ball joint, goes up more than 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. He's got a butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest area, increasing the range of motion. Bicep cut, double jointed elbows, his wrists rotate, and it's going to be hinged as well. Ball joint is torso, rotate around, forward and back. Another ball joint is waist, rotate around, forward and back, giving him very good range of motion in his torso area. Legs completely does the splits. Not a ball joint, but a similar type of concept. Rotation is non-existent. They go forward that much. Back, not too much. Double jointed knees. And their ankle here. Forward and back. Can't rotate. Tilt, rock. He has the older sort of style ball joint. There's also toe articulation. Now let's check out the articulation on the big guy. And I expect it to be the same. So starting with his head. Rotates from side to side, up that far, down that far, can tilt, shoulders, ball joint, more than 90 degrees, up, down, around, butterfly joint, bicep cut, double jointed elbow, his wrist, can rotate, and it's going to be hinged, ball joint, and his torso, Another one is waist. Legs complete as a splits. Same kind of joints. Little bit of thigh rotation, not much. Forward that far. Back. Double jointed knees. Then his ankle here. Forward and back. Can it tilt rock. Rotate. And toe articulation. 
Now they have the exact same articulation and what looks to be pretty much the same sculpt. I would assume that McFarlane simply made a larger version of the same figure, the upsized one or shrunk one. For this next scene, we're going to move to a city setup in the city streets. Here's the Justice Society of America meeting up. They're discussing the Black Adam situation. And here's the JSA ready for action. All pulling out their weapons ready to go. And here are both versions of the Adam Smasher in the city streets. Now let's check them out. Next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other Adam Smasher and Adam figures. Now unfortunately, I don't have any other Adam Smasher figures. The Mattel DC Universe Classics build a figure Adam Smasher is a very nice figure. But I didn't get him at the time. I was really only collecting Batman related stuff. Here's the Adam Smasher next to a DC Direct Arrowverse Adam from the TV show. And here, next to a Mattel DC Multiverse Adam from the Arrowverse. Unfortunately, I don't really have a classic comic looking Adam. Well, unless you count this guy. This is a really small figure of Adam. I actually have no idea where I got this thing from. But I just thought it was really cool, as it makes perfect sense, because Adam can shrink down much smaller than even this. Now let's check them out, next to some other McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here they are, next to the Justice Society of America figures from Black Adam. These four figures, Adam Smasher, Cyclone, Hawkman, and Dr. Fate, make up the Justice Society of America, at least in the Black Adam film. These four characters, I believe, make up the Justice Society of America in the Black Adam film. Now, Adam Smasher, Dr. Fate, and Hawkman, yeah, they're the movie designs, but they're all fudgeable into your comic displays if you really want. And here they are, next to Sabak, the other mega figure in this wave. He's the villain in the film. And here they are, next to the star of the show himself, Black Adam. And here's the entire wave of McFarlane at Black Adam movie figures. I had heard some rumors there was a Black Adam vehicle, but that hasn't been revealed yet. There might be some new figures. Might be they're not allowed to show them yet. But even if this is everything, it's a pretty nice wave. Big variety of characters. A lot of additions to your DC universe. Here's Adam Smasher next to the McFarlane figures from the Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad also exists in the DC Cinematic Universe, so the characters could potentially interact with each other. Then, next to the McFarland figures from Zack Snyder's Justice League, Zack Snyder's Justice League is also part of the DC Cinematic Universe, adding to the roster of heroes. Here they are, next to Harley Quinn for Birds of Prey. That film is also part of the same shared universe. And here, next to the Wonder Woman 1984 figures, it's also part of that universe. The DC Cinematic Universe is not the only live-action universe that McFarlane made figures from. Here are the Adam Smashers, next to Green Arrow and Flash from CW's Arrowverse. McFarlane also made figures from the film The Batman. Just like CW's Arrowverse, The Batman exists in a different universe from the DC Cinematic Films. And then speaking of Black Adam, here are these two figures next to the Justice League Endless Winter Black Adam. Not the movie version, but the comic version. Now let's check out this Adam Smasher mega figure next to a bunch of other McFarlane DC Multiverse mega figures. Here he is with the first assortment, Steppenwolf and Darkseid from Zack Snyder's Justice League. They exist in the same shared cinematic universe. The next mega figure they made, that was King Shark from the Suicide Squad. It was a Walmart exclusive. King Shark had both a mega figure and a Biddle figure release. And they released the Swamp Thing mega figure. There are three variations. Swamp Thing is considerably taller than Adam Smasher. Adam Smasher should have been this height. Here he is, next to the Titan Joker and Clayface. Titan Joker is even taller than Swamp Thing. And here, next to Killer Croc and Man Bad. These are the most recent mega figures before the Black Adam wave. And here, next to Sabak, the other mega figure in the Black Adam wave. Now the next wave of mega figures, I'm really excited for that. It's going to be Bane and Necron. They look fantastic. Here are all of the different McFarlane DC Multiverse mega figures. Really happy they're making these guys. They're awesome. The next two are going to be Bane and Necron. And I can't wait to find out what's coming next. Here he is. Next to a few of the larger McFarlane build a figures. Now let's check them out. Next to some other recently released McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. 
Here they are, next to the Blackest Night Wave, build a figure, Atrocitus. Then, next to the Batman who last dressed as Batman, and the Tower exclusive, gold labeled Lex Luthor in Superman power suit. And here they are, next to the McFarland Toy Store exclusive, gold label, unmasked Zarnar Batman, and unmasked Infinite Frontier Robin. Here are the Atom Smashers, next to the Target exclusive, Crime Syndicate Ultraman and Superwoman. Then, next to the Batman vs. Hush 2-pack. And here they are, next to the single release of Hush. And now, standing next to Ghostmaker. Here they are, next to the Arkham Knight and Grifter. And here they are, next to the John Kent Superboy and Tim Drake Red Robin. Then, next to the TV show Flash and the comic Godspeed. And here, with the most recent video game figures, Injustice 2's Green Arrow and Reverse Flash. And finally, here they are, next to the Walmart exclusive All Gold Antichrisis Wonder Woman and Walmart exclusive Wally West Flash. Now let's check him out, next to some mega figures from other McFarland lines. Here he is, with the spawn mega figures Violator, Cygor, and Overt Kill. And here they are, next to the Witcher mega figures. On the left, we have the Ice Giant from the Witcher video game, and on the right, the Kikomora and the horse from the Netflix TV show. Then, with the Princess Bride mega figure, both versions of Fezzik. Now let's check them out, next to some action figures from different various companies, to see how they fit in both scale and style-wise, in case you want to know which lines you can mix them with. Since they're like Barlow toys, they're typically the 7-inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect, and work my smaller. But first, we're going to check them out with some of the McFarland toys brothers. In front of you are five different action figures, all from McFarland Toys, all 7 inch scale. Then, next is more McFarland Toys. These are from different various video game properties. And now, next is some Jack specific wrestling figures. And here they are. Next is some DST or Diamond Select Toys. Then, next is some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And here, with some NECA figures. Then, with some Mattel wrestling figures. And now, with some Jazzwares AEW wrestlers. And here they are, with some Mezco 112 collective figures. Then, next to some Mattel, DC Universe Classics, and Multiverse figures. This Atom Smasher, because of his size, he could fit in with pretty much any of the different lines. He would fit in great with the DC Universe Classic stuff. And here, with some Mayfex figures. Then, with some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here they are, with some SH Figure Arts action figures. And finally, next to some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. So overall, these are some pretty nice figures. My only real complaint is I wish the Mega Figure Adam Smasher was bigger. He should be as tall as Swamp Thing. Their sculpt and paint job are excellent. The texturing, no issues there. Articulation is everything you would expect from McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Their accessories, well, alternate hands are great, but the bigger Adam Smasher he really should have had the fists. If I had to pick one of them, it would have been him. They picked the wrong one. If I were to rate these figures, I'd give the small one a 7 and the big one a 7.5 out of 10. If I had to pick one of these guys, it probably would be the mega figure. But I do prefer to be able to have my figures to be able to interact with each other when they're not using their superpowers. Whether they're in their base or making plans or whatever it is. So I do see the need for having both these guys. But if you want to make a really cool Black Adam display, I would use the big guy. But just don't forget, that's when he's in action mode, when he's fighting and using his powers. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say with the video, add it to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.